So okay guys, we're in the airplane. This is a Cessna 182. Uh, down here, you can see we have our GPS. The flight plan's in there. Let's get rid of the GPS. And the first thing uh, we want to do is we want to put the airplane in the GPS mode. Right now, the airplane is in the VOR mode, as you can see in the VOR1. I have 111.4, and that's Catalina VOR. This, the, this is the nav button in the Cessna 182. We want to put the nav button into GPS mode, and as you can see, the, GP the VOR immediately switched to the center. When we flip it back to the VOR mode, the gauge is now reading the VOR again, so let's put it into a GPS mode. The needle is centered. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a heading of 183. That's, that's our initial heading, the heading of 183 to the point Driffy, because we want to avoid confusion. Even though the VOR heading does not affect the needle, you do want to put in that, uh, that flight path heading to avoid any confusion. So we'll put in a heading of 183. Let's zoom out. And uh, we're ready for takeoff. Let's uh, make sure rich. Flaps down to 10. Strobe lights on. Transponder to alt. And uh, we can take off. We're going to take off from Long Beach at runway 25 left. And we're going to do a proper departure procedure. We're going to do a left downwind departure procedure. Uh, that is directly from my uh, VFR departure procedure tutorial. So as we take off, we'll turn on to the left crosswind. And we'll turn on to the left downwind. We'll intercept the GPS. And we'll fly the GPS heading. Power is full, engine instruments are in green, the airspeed is live. Let's put the airplane cowling on the horizon. Immediately you can see that since we took off the VOR needle, let me zoom it in, the VOR needle which is run by the GPS now is starting to slowly move to the left so the further we get away from our flight path the greater the needle deflection is So as we're turning onto the crosswind, we'll roll out for just a few seconds. Uh, let's roll right back into the downwind. And as we're turning back onto the downwind, okay, we are at 1,000 feet AGL. The power is to 23 uh, inches of mercury. RPM is down to 2450 uh, for a normal climb. Okay, so as we're turning onto the downwind, you're going to start seeing the needle is slowly going to start to come back in because right now we're starting to move towards the flight path. And the closer we get to the flight path, the closer the needle moves. And it looks like we're going to have to start our turn pretty soon. Actually, let's start it right now uh, to intercept that needle uh, for our flight path. Now, once we are uh, set on our flight path of a heading of 183 and the needle is centered, I'll bring up the GPS and we'll take a look at it. And you'll see that the, the VOR needle, which is in the GPS mode right now, will match what the GPS is, uh, is telling us. When we are navigating in GPS mode, uh, the VOR needle in GPS mode will be our primary navigation instrument. And we'll use our GPS display as a check on our position. So we're on a heading of 183 right now. Let's bring up the GPS. Let me zoom it in a little bit so we can see a little better. And as you can see, we are right next to the flight path. 
Now, if you remember from what I said earlier, is that the needle uh, needle deflection will actually show us our our distance from the flight path. Right now, the distance is about 0.1 miles, which is actually pretty close to our flight path, uh, given that we actually have uh, four miles on each side to maneuver. And I know some of you guys are saying, hey, four miles is a lot on either side, but th these rules are not just made for uh, low Cessnas. These rules are made for everybody. So think of an airliner. They still have those four miles to uh, maneuver on each side. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start turning the VOR heading bug just to show you that it has no effect whatsoever on the needle. As you can see, I'm freely turning the VOR heading bug, and I'm up to a heading of a 300 almost, and there's uh, the needle is not doing anything. So the setting on the VOR has absolutely no effect on the GPS needle. So let's just put it back to a heading of 183. Like I said uh, before, you always want to have the VOR heading bug in the GPS mode on the same heading as your flight path to avoid any confusion. This will become even more important when you're uh, dealing with HSI, so we'll, which is coming up after this one. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's measure our uh, deflection distance right now. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the airplane to a heading of approximately 273, which is 90 degrees away from our flight path. As I said before, the VOR needle in the GPS mode gives us our, our distance from the flight path. So the further we are from our flight path, the further the needle is from the center. So I'm going to bring out the GPS. Uh, as we take a look at the needle, right now the needle is touching the edge of that circle. And if we look at the GPS, the distance from our flight path, as the needle is touching the circle, our distance from the flight path is exactly one mile. So that one circle deflection of the needle on the VOR gauge in GPS mode gives us a distance of about a mile away from the flight path. So let's just go back and intercept our flight path again. So I'm going to turn to a heading of about 093. And the only reason I'm actually making these 90 degree turns off course is just to show you guys how far the needle will move. Actually, let's take a look under the wing now. See, act, that is Queen Mary. Remember, I told you from the, well, I showed you from the actual flight video that I had that Queen Mary is represented in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And believe it or not, Queen Mary is not only a visual point, but Queen Mary is also actually a GPS point. If you put VPLQM into your GPS, that intersect point is actually Queen Mary. Okay, so now we're heading back uh, to our flight path. Um, the needle is closing in, so let's start our turn back to a heading of 183 um, to our intercept point, Driffy. Now even though we're using the VOR gauge uh, in the GPS navigation as a primary instrument, we're still going to have to look at our GPS display for our distances. Okay, there's the GPS, you can see the point Driffy, it's one mile away. One great thing about GPS navigation is that once you reach your checkpoint, the GPS will automatically give you your flight leg to your next checkpoint. And that includes updating the VOR needle while the VOR is in the GPS mode. As we're looking at the GPS right now, the needle is still centered. The GPS, there it goes. That's our next point. Uh, our next point is Holtz. You can see it in the top left corner. 
and we're going to turn to a heading of 232 that DTK in the top left corner 232 that is your uh, that is your flight path heading to that point so as we turn to a heading of 232 and we intercept uh, the flight path to the next checkpoint holds we'll compensate for the wind as we would you know VOR navigation GPS navigation is no different you still have the wind there to compensate for and that is pretty much it when it comes to the GPS uh, navigation using the VOR gauge. Uh, now the next lesson will be a uh, HSI VOR navigation. Uh, so you guys stand by for that one and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.